Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art, and uh, I'm going to read a little bit more of this article that I found on the library when I was doing some research. It's called The Safety of Nuclear Power by Alvin M. Weinberg, and it was presented in uh, Before the Council for the Advancement of Science Writing Briefing on New Horizons in Science in Boulder, in Boulder Colorado, November 14, 1972. This version is for use in a series of articles on energy in Atlantic City Press, July 1973. Here, I'll show you the, the credits really close so you can see them in case anybody wants to go do some scientific research. And here's the other part. So check this out when it was released. What's in here that is so valuable that the government had to hide it for a long time? And we shall find out, my dears. Okay, so we're on page two. I didn't get very far because the other night I was a little bit heartbroken over Chance's death. I won't go into that. I'm still heartbroken, but let me get on with the reading. So we're on the third paragraph on page two, and it says... At the outset, we must remember that the technology community has always recognized that a nuclear system is potentially a dangerous device. For every kilowatt of electrical power generated, there will be an equilibrium in the reactor, about 10,000 curies of radioactivity. One curie being the radiation equivalent of a one gram of radium. The radioactivity is in the form of various fission products as well as in the liquid metal fast breeder reactors, LM LMFBR. And I don't think we use the liquid breeder reactors anymore. I think we discovered they were way too dangerous. About 3.5 grams of plutonium-239, a new fuel that produced in the breeder is in itself radioactive. So humankind invented plutonium-239. That's my comments from the peanut gallery. Back to the reading. About 1 million kilowatt breeder, a 1 million kilowatt breeder, therefore, has an equilibrium about 10 billion curies of fission product radioactivity, as well as about 3,500 kilograms of plutonium-239. I think that's why we don't use the breeder reactors anymore. Um, thus, we are dealing with the highly toxic materials that despite these potential dangers, I can assert that nuclear systems per kilowatt hours have caused much less damage to the biosphere than any other sources of thermal energy is a tribute to the ingenuity and foresight of the reactor gen in engineer. And I would say that is really actually a tribute to the fucking lying nuclear engineers who don't test for the harm it causes on our planet and humanity, stupid motherfuckers. So, back to the reading. From the earliest days of nuclear energy, we nuclear people have constantly have been constantly reminded of this potential danger. In 1942, one of the first jobs I did for the Manhattan Project was to estimate the hazard caused by minute amounts of radioactive carbon that could be emitted from the early air-cooled graphite reactors. And General Leslie R. Groves insisted that Enrico Fermi move his West Stands critical reactor from the center of Southside Chicago because of the potential hazard. Uh, if they're talking about the Fermi power plant, it's a fucking mess right now. Uh, gosh, this stuff upsets me. Okay, back to the reading. Being so sensitively, sensitively attuned to this potential, we have developed techniques and methods for handling these materials safely. The question is, successful as we have been in the past, what can we say about the likelihood of our continuing success in the future when large nuclear energy reactors will dot the landscape everywhere? I don't know, fucker. Go ask Japan. Stupid fucks. Okay, back to the reading. The potential hazard of a nuclear system arises from the toxicity, both of the materials that keep the system burning, and from the fission product ashes. Listen to this, folks. 
Plutonium-239 with a half-life, the time during which one half of the original material changes by the radioactive processes. Plutonium with a half-life of 24,400 years is lethal to man in doses of about 16 thousandths of a gram if ingested in the lungs. 16 thousandths of a gram. That is one sixth divided by one sixteen thousand. You get that? Sixteen thousand. So it's sixteen divided by zero. One thousand. Sixteen thousandths of a gram. Sixteen divided by a thousand. Fuckers. Strontium 90 with a half life of 30 years will be lethal if about 70 millionths of a gram. That's taking 70 and putting 1 million underneath it and dividing a million into 70. That's how little of a gram it takes. Iodine 131 with a half life of about 8 days will be lethal after ingestion of only about 30 billionth of a gram. That means you put 30 on top and a billion underneath and you divide the 30 by a billion and that's how much it takes to kill you. Thank God it goes away after seven days, but if you're near a nuclear reactor, you're fucked. Okay, back to the reading. Thus, the potential hazard lies in the possibility of even small quantities of these materials getting into the biosphere. The countermeasures amount to controlling these materials at every stage of the processes to prevent any significant amount from entering the biosphere. Well, I think the nuclear energy industry has 100% uh, wholly failed in that goal. The whole nuclear, back to the reading, the whole nuclear power system involves four subsystems. One, mining and refining uranium to fuel the reactor. Two, the reactor itself. Three, transport and chemical processing of radioactive materials from the reactor, and four, waste disposal. What can one say about the safety of each of these subsystems? Well, we can tell you. You guys fucked up. They didn't do jack shit. They didn't do anything right. Okay, here we go. Back to the reading. Mining and refining. There seems to be evidence that uranium miners run a, seems to be this motherfucker. There seems to be evidence that uranium miners run a greater risk of lung cancer than does the general public. If miners if a miner smokes, the risk is compounded. Okay, so let's blame tobacco. Recent studies by F. E. London, J. K. Wagner, and V. E. Archer of the U.S. Public Health Service suggest that miners who were exposed to 160 working level months, that's cool how they like to tr train this, working level months, that means 40 hours a week, every five days a week, 160 working level months, the presently accepted level, assuming the miner works 40 years at four working level months per year, will have an incidence of lung cancer five times greater than does the general public. That means if somebody works at a uranium mine for 40 years, they have five times the risk of a can lung cancer. If the miner works only 25 years at this level, a total of 100 working level months, it is not it is not clear that there is a statistically significant increase in lung cancer. Lying motherfuckers. Nevertheless, the number of deaths caused by the mining of uranium per kilowatt hours is much less than those from mining of coal, simply because there are so many fewer miners involved per kilowatt hours. The way these motherfuckers twist the information is just astounding. Okay. How far am I into it? I'm going to stop here. We're at nine minutes. Uh, I guess I got a page and a half. And I'm not going to push myself to read this. Uh, as you can tell, it gets me completely excited because this is this motherfucker is why they have... He's one of the primary reasons of the people who was actually made an effort to manipulate the, the, the truth and convince the populace that nuclear... We didn't have anything to worry about. When right now that we're killing the Pacific Ocean, we're just completely ignoring the Pacific Ocean and we're killing it. 
We are killing the Pacific Ocean. And all those children that are going swimming in the Pacific Ocean right now and digging for crabs and having fun and pretending like, woohoo, we live in California and life is still great while the baby seals are washing up and the whales are washing up dead on the shores. And, you know, it's shocking to see a dead whale on the coastline. If you've seen that, we are seeing that more and more here in Oregon, but it's happening up and down the coast. And all those children that go into the ocean in 5, 10 years, because of the rate of half-life, the reason that the contamination takes 10 to 15 years is because of the rate of the half-life. When cesium-137 has a half-life of, you know, 37 years, every 10 years it explodes inside your body. That's why it takes 10 to 15 years to get your body to have cancer or genetic problems, or endocrine problems. I mean, there's a huge list, diabetes, of things that will happen. But it is here, and we need to learn how to live with it, and we need to stop lying about it, and we need to stop being afraid of it, because guess what? We're all breathing it, but we cannot go in the Pacific Ocean anymore, frankly, at all. And anybody who goes into it ought not to be shocked when in 10 years they have cancer. Because that's what's going to happen. And or, and or we're going to see a huge level of sterility among the young boys. They'll just be sterile. They may not get cancer, but they'll be sterile. So, anyways, you guys, I'm going to go. I'm going to put my courage feet on. I've got several pairs on still right now. It's Things are not easy in my little world. Uh, the death of Chance was pretty hard. It affected me pretty hard, I have to say. And it's affected my children quite a bit. And it really has made me appreciate living, and I actually appreciate everybody who watches my videos and wants to help save the planet. So remember, this painting is for sale for $500. If you can't send us a check for $500, you could send us a $100 check for five months. At the end of five months, I'll send you the painting. It's by Ricardo DiNapoli. He painted it in commemoration of what happened at Fukushima. I think it's a fabulous piece of artwork that will actually get people talking about it. The more people have this in their homes, the more they can talk about it, the less afraid people will become. And, you know, we need to just, like, be able to talk about it and not make it some big freak out and not something people don't want to admit. Because we, we have to admit the life that we're living if we're going to really enjoy it. So, ciao, you guys. Put your courage feet on. See you in a couple days.